Hopefully this is in focus. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. In this video, we are going to be talking about multi-file compilation in C++. So this is like a huge step in your C++ development because this is where things really get complicated. I'm not gonna lie, but I'll do my best to break it down, make it simple. So first you need to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy it to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now, when you're working in another programming language such as C Sharp or Java or something else, you can easily create new files. You can put your classes in separate files. And when you compile, it all works nicely. Unfortunately, C++ is kind of a nightmare when it comes to multiple files, but they're still essential. Oftentimes, as you get larger programs, it's gonna make sense to break some of that stuff off into multiple files to keep things organized. You can put certain stuff over here, certain stuff over here, and that way, it's not just one giant, huge program. That would not be maintainable, and is really just not ideal. So, the first step is to just break up your program into three files. Then, as you get more complex programs, you understand the concepts, and you can scale that to more and more files. So the bare minimum, a program that's split into multiple files will probably be these three files. Number one is a header file. Number two is an implementation file. And then number three, I don't really have a name for it, but it is where you use these files. So I'll just call it the main file. This is where your main function exists. So you can kind of think of it like this. Here is, oh, bleh. You can think of it like this. Here is your program and you can utilize this function library. And this function library consists of two pieces, a header file .h and an implementation file .cpp. So basically we can break off our functions into separate files and then we can use those in our application by just including them. So just like you would say include IO stream, we can include our custom header. It'll look a little bit different because we'll actually put it in double quotes instead of the carrots. So it'll be something like this. Include and then in quotes the file name custom.h for example, end quote. So that is going to look in the same directory for the file. So right now we're just doing this with simple functions. Eventually we'll be able to do this with classes. We'll break off into multiple files and you can often have multiple header files and multiple implementation files, but you're always only going to have one main file. And that is if you're making an executable. If you're just making a function library, basically a collection of functions, that main function is not necessarily needing to be a part of it and you could just have these two, and then anybody who wants to use your function library can get th this code here and include it in their program. Another way to think of how this is split up, you can think of this as the declarations, this as the definitions, and this as the callings. So here's where we declare our functions, here's where we define them, and here's where we call them. As for actual file extensions, this one, the main file is going to be .cpp or C or CC, basically a C++ file. Same for the implementation file. So that is also going to be of the same file extension, in this case, CPP. The header file is going to be .h. So these two are going to contain C++ code that gets compiled. And then this header file is just going to basically be like an interface on how to work with this implementation file. And you'll see what I mean in the next videos. Now the header file needs to be included in both of these source files. So you can also visualize it like this. We have a .h file, and then we have two CPP files, which are going to both include this header file. The header file is just going to be like the, the structure of your functions, the declarations, and once we get into classes, it'll be the structure of your classes, but it doesn't actually have any executable code. There's no function definitions in that file. 
Also, in the header file, there's going to be what's known as a preprocessor directive. And basically, when you compile your program, there is another step that happens, which is known as preprocessing. So we need to basically send a message. <laughs> this sounds really stupid and weird, but follow along for now. We have to send a message to the preprocessor saying, yo, dude, we created this header file and we want to include it in our code, but we only want to do this one time. So that means if multiple files are including this header file throughout our large application, we don't accidentally include it twice. We don't want to basically re-declare everything that's in the header file. And in order to send that message, we use what's known as a preprocessor directive. And it looks like this. At the beginning of your file, you're going to put a pound sign and say, if in def, if not defined, and then you make up some name and that name can be whatever, but usually it's the same as the file, probably in all caps. So it could be like custom underscore H, anything just to make it unique. So when we're including this, we're basically uniquely giving this file a name inside of the code. And basically the preprocessor will look at this, see if we have included it or already, and if not, it will proceed. So if it's not defined, what we're going to do is we're going to define it. And then at the end of the entire header file, we're going to end that if by just saying end if. So this is a little funky and it's probably not anything you've really seen in other programming languages. And it's just something you gotta get used to. Everything that goes in the header file goes in between these lines of code. That's all you gotta know. Now the final thing when it comes to multiple file compilation is how to actually compile these files because you have multiple C++ files. So to do this, you need to change the way you're compiling. Now this is for G++, that's the compiler I've been using, but this is going to vary depending on the tools you're using or the compiler you're using. So it might be different if you're using Visual Studio or Embarcadero Rad Studio, whatever it is, you just gotta figure out how to do that in that tool. I can't go over all of them, so this video is going over G++, but it shouldn't be too complicated. Just look up how to do multiple file compilation in whatever tool you're using. But it might look something like this file1.cpp, so that could be the one with the main function in it, and then a space, and then file2.cpp. So it's really not that complicated. You just have to add another file in that file compilation list, and it should still give you the output a.out. Now there are some possible extra steps you can do with this, but this is the bare minimum. If you wanna know more details, check out the upcoming videos, because we're gonna talk about object files, how to automate this process with make files, lots of juicy content. So make sure you watch the upcoming videos and be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Again, this is the theory. I like to just go over the theory so you don't just dive in, copy and paste and try to make things work. That's the sloppy, messy way to do it. It's best to understand the concepts. And I admit the concepts are very complicated. So just take it slow and we'll, we'll figure it out, hopefully, maybe. <laughs>